this is Mark Franklin and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. And I am going to be talking to you about this, the Canon XF605 camcorder. Now I've been playing with it for a few months and as many of you know who've been following my work and, and my exploits on social media, uh, previous to this I was using the XF705. Now, don't let the numbers fool you. The XF605 came out after the 705 and by all measures is a much better camera. The XF705 came out around the middle end of 2018 and I shot with it 2019 to about uh, 2022 and it had a great image quality to it. Uh, Great low light sensitivity, but it was big, it was heavy. You couldn't shoot uh, 4K 60p on it. Uh, if you wanted to do streaming, you couldn't do internal recording. Now, it would appear that someone at Canon read my review of the XF705, and I know they did because I heard back from them, and. A lot of it wasn't happy, but they respected what I said. And so they came out with the XF605 about a year ago. I've been using it extensively on shoots, all different types of shoots, not just the usual put it on a tripod and shoot. Uh, I actually took this hiking in some pretty rugged areas on a couple of occasions. In one shoot, I was in the Valley of Fire in Nevada, outside of Las Vegas. Highly recommend that you go there if you have a chance, but make sure it's in the cooler months because uh, when it's hot, it's too hot to get out of the car. And the rangers will tell you that. But we went there in, I believe it was December, and it was gorgeous. The sand, um, the scenery, it's been used in many movies. It's just gorgeous. And then a couple months later, I took it on a family trip to Arizona and Utah. We stayed in Page in the northern part of Arizona. And we, from there, we explored that area and we went up into southern Utah around the Kanab area. And, you know, I put this camera on a monopod and walked around with it for hours and it didn't feel cumbersome. Normally when I walk around with a camera like that, I get tired out after a while. While it's not a light camera per se, it's just well balanced and I was able to hike with it uh, for hours. Uh, not just, you know, straight hiking. I was on cliffs and other interesting places in order to get some nice shots and it really did a wonderful job. Just a quick tour of the XF605. Here you have the LCD monitor. You can go front, back. You have all the controls nicely laid out over here. It's very easy to find what you're looking for. I really like the way the, the buttons are laid out. Here is the audio controls over here. You have the gain, white balance, your filter change buttons over here. On the other side, you have your audio connections, two XLR audio inputs. If you want to add additional mics, one of the things I love about this camera is you can have four audio channels. And with an XLR to 3.5 millimeter stereo adapter, you can connect two more professional mics, although It'll be difficult to control the inputs. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. So you can input four channels. Uh, there is a pretty decent onboard mic over here. So you can set in the, the menus what you want as far as which audio channels are going, coming from which input. Most of the time you'll probably put uh, shotgun microphone and or, and or wireless microphones and XLRs. That'll be channels one and two. And then just use channel three and four as the onboard mic. 
the XF605 normally does have a mic holder over here. The unit that I was sent uh, came with the mic holder but no screws and it was just too much trouble to get a hold of the screws which they are specialty screws. So I just did this. I took one of these cold shoe mounts that gives you additional two cold shoe mounts did the same basic thing for me. Works. On top here, you have an additional record button, an additional zoom that works pretty good. You can also address the menu from here, and it's really easy to navigate the menu from the joystick. The menu is really nicely laid out. I had no trouble finding anything in the menu. And it's an extensive menu, but it's easily navigable. So here on the back is the battery bay. These BP30A batteries that are standard coming with the XF605 and the XF705, they last a lot longer on the XF605. One of the things that I was really impressed with between XF705 and XF605 was battery life. One of the things I noticed right away with the XF705 and some of Canon's smaller camcorders like the XA40, which I have in my fleet here, if you keep the battery on them, it drains the battery. So you have to take it off. Not with the XF605. I've had this battery on probably a couple weeks and I have not seen any significant uh, degradation in the time that it has left to be used. So the XF705, the battery would, I'd be lucky if it lasted for about 110 minutes. It's an hour and 50 minutes. On the XF605, I'm not as worried about having to change batteries in the middle of a lecture or a play or something like that because I've got a full two hours and about 35 minutes to two hours and 40 minutes of uh, record time. So that is something that uh, I was very, very happy to see. Uh, another great thing about this camera is you have uh, uh, the ability to record 4K and 60P. Now technically the XF705 could do it if you use the H.265 codec, but the problem was the H.265 4K 60P codec or even the 30P codec was difficult to play back on many computers, even if you had a high-end workstation. For whatever reason, there was a special chip only found in Core, uh, Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs. If you had a higher-end computer with a Core i9 or a Xeon CPU, you weren't getting any help and the H.265 codec was just a drag. You had to convert it to another, another codec that you could play back and it took about six minutes for every minute to convert it. So that was a real nightmare. No such problem on this camera. Uh, you've got a number of different codecs, MOV, MP4, uh, lots of different bit rates. If you're using the higher bit rate codecs, you're gonna need the V90 class SDXC cards. The V30s that you used on the XF705 aren't gonna cut it. So what you can do though, is you can record two codecs at the same time, which is a great feature. One of the benefits of the dual recording system is I could use the high bit rate 10 bit 422 codec on the V90 cards in slot A and use the lower 4208 bit codecs on the less expensive V30 cards as a backup in slot B. And that worked out great. Um, and I was really happy with the results. And even the, the 8-bit 420 codec files looked great. One other thing that I want to show you about this camera that's quite unique. Another company whose products I really like is Tascam. And this is their CA XLR 2D. And what it is, is an XLR adapter for cameras that don't have XLRs. So you're saying, why would you need it for the XF605 since it has XLR inputs? Well, it also has a smart shoe on back here. And when you plug in 
the Task MCA XLR 2D unit, you get two additional XLR inputs. So you now have four XLR inputs on the camera. Before I was talking to you about using the three and a half millimeter input, which you have really no control over, here you have control over your inputs. You have full use of all these controls for the uh, left, right, or channel three, channel four. Plus, there's even another three and a half millimeter input over here. So this can actually, even though the camera can only re record four inputs, you can get another two channels in this and you can just use the controls here to mix it into uh, the channel three and four audio stream. So this gives you a lot of extra flexibility. It gives you another mic holder up here, another cold shoe over here for mounting a light or a, a receiver for a wireless mic system. If you're doing panels or conferences where, you're, where you have multiple people speaking at the same time, this is a great, great thing to have. The XF705 is still on the market at about $7,000. The XF605 actually lists for, I believe, $4,700. So it's $2,300 less than the XF705 and it's a better camera. I highly recommend the Canon XF605 as a production camera. It takes gorgeous pictures. It's easy to use despite its complexity. Um, it's very flexible in what you can do with it. And uh, I really couldn't find too much to say about it that I didn't like. So if you're interested in getting a really great camera, uh, take a look at the XF605. It's like I designed it myself.